So this is the motherboard project. It's hooked up to a Raspberry Pi right now. Um, you can see the board itself. We've got our processor, our clock, our crystal, the latches and the transceiver. Down here we've got two jumpers. And it's the, they're for disabling the interrupts. So if we don't have our interrupt card plugged in, then we use those jumpers there. So there's the non maskable interrupt and then there's your regular interrupt pins. Got a reset button, uh, power here, and then some LEDs to just kind of indicate statuses. Right here we've got our SPI adapter, it's hooked up to the Raspberry Pi. Next card over, we've got our RAM, one megabyte. And then these two cards are parallel controllers, the 8255 or the 71055. Kind of see up in here, you can see there's double row of pen headers. The top four by two there's port C and the eight by two down here is A and B. There's eight card slots. This one's only got six pin headers soldered in. I ran out of pin headers waiting for them to come in. You can see they're all all the same, kind of upside down here, but they're all labeled, so you can actually just go right off these pin headers to a breadboard for uh, development purposes. When you connect to the Raspberry Pi, it's connected the same way all my other boards are. Let's show you here. So you come up the eighth pin from the uh, left there on the top row is our ground, the orange wire there. And then next to that, the yellow wire is our, is our SCK, the blue wire connected to CS chip select. That's connected, you can see, right below the yellow wire there. And then you got the gray and the green wire there next to the SCK. And when you come over to here, you just flip them so it goes SCK, it goes SISO, so yellow, green, gray. But if you look over here, it's yellow, gray, green. Um, you can look up the pin headers on a Raspberry Pi and they're labeled. It's pretty straightforward. And then the white wire is just our 5 volt. So I've plugged the 5 volt into the SPI adapter, but you could actually plug it down here. So it's, it's just a net. You could go in or out on those. So, let me show you this run. This particular board is only 5 megahertz and it's running an actual 8088, the original 8088, not the Dash 2 or Dash 1. It's a little bit slower than the V20s, but not by much. The main reason why I go with the V20s for the boards I sell is the availability. So, let's see it working there. Now, to test these, I've got a board here. Some LEDs on it. I'll just hook the ground wire up to one of these grounds. It could be any ground on the board. And I've wrote some programs. Let's go TBO. And let's do TBU. And what this is going to do is it's going to put on one board, we're going to be every other. So it's one of them does fives and one does A's. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think it's the one that's tied to port 278 does A's, and the one tied to port 378 does 5's. So you just check it out, you can see that this is off of port C. So port A, B, and C all get wrote just 5's that are crossed. And like I say, on this one it's just A's. So it's just kind of testing to show that it works. And you select that, there's a jumper. 
There's a jumper. Let's see if we can get some light in here. It's hard to see. Right there. And you select which port you want your 8255 to be on. And the, these are kind of PC compatible. I, I'd say quasi PC compatible. Like I try to use the same ports that they used on the PC as much as possible. So there is a interrupt controller in development. I just haven't tested it yet. And also a uh, ROM so that you could run this independent of the Raspberry Pi. And that's coming in the future. Thanks for checking this out.